안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today I want to share with you my experience learning English. I learned the foundations of English the way many people do. Sometimes they learn it at school, sometimes they go to a private academy or they have a private tutor. I don't think I was very good at it back then. I started to become comfortable in English when instead of trying to learn English, I used English to learn how to code. This way, learning the English language wasn't the goal. English was the vehicle that I used to accomplish my bigger goal, which was to learn how to program. When I was learning to code, none of the documentations or tutorials that I wanted to follow were in my native language. Instead, they were all in English, which was really annoying. But looking back, I am grateful that that was the case. Learning to code in English meant that as I was learning to code, I was practicing English in the background. Some people say that to really internalize and dominate a language, you actually have to start thinking in that language. I think that's true because I realized that by learning to code in English, I was starting to think in English. By understanding programming concepts in English, I became more comfortable with English. If I saw programming concepts like abstractions, imperative code, declarative code, doc typing, type complexity, I realized that it was better to understand these concepts in English than rather than trying to look for a translation. I really think that if you're learning to code, if you do it in English, some things are actually going to be easier to understand because most of the time, the clues of what things do in programming are on the name itself. For example, a concept like event bubbling in JavaScript will be easier understood if you know what event and bubble mean. When we are learning to code, we're also going to be faced with many errors. And if we Google those errors in English, there's gonna be a very high percentage that we're going to find a solution for our error rather than if we try to find the solution to the error in a different community in our native language because for better or worse, all these error messages are also in English. The people that are facing those error messages and the people that will give you the solution, they also speak English. If you think about it, if you use English, you open the door to such a huge amount of people that you can interact with in communities for developers that, for example, in Stack Overflow, you can find answers for almost anything already where you can actually talk and make developer friends and you can see what the news are in the developer world, which are all in English. Also, if we think about it, for better or worse, the programming languages that will give us a job are all written in English. The concepts and the words of our trade, our industry, they are all in English. The internet itself was built speaking English. Python, for example, was created by a Dutch person, but Python is in English. Or Linux is from Finland, but Linux is still in English. The documentation of most open source projects that we are going to be using in our daily job are also written initially in English. And the new things that are happening in our industry are all happening in English. For example, if you look at the cryptocurrency industry or what's going on with NFTs, all these things are happening in English. If we want to be where the innovation is and where people are building exciting and cool and different things, the way we can interact with those people and the way that they are sharing their ideas is all in English. Also, after the pandemic, there are more and more companies that are hiring remote workers. When you work remotely, they don't care about how you look like or where you live. They care about your code and your English because you have to be able to communicate with the team. So if you are learning to code, I would really, really advise you to learn to code in English. It would help you a lot as a developer to understand all these concepts that are named using English words. And also it will make your English better. Instead of making English the goal, as I said before, you can make English a vehicle to accomplish a different goal. And by doing this, you're going to be practicing English in the background without even noticing. As a beginner, you're going to have many questions as well, and you will be able to access all these answers and questions if you do it in English rather than in our own native languages. If you are already a developer and you think that you could improve your English a little bit, I really encourage you to do so. It will make you more competitive in your career. You will be able to apply for different jobs overseas and in different kinds of companies. And also you will be able to improve your craft as a developer. We have to be careful with the lies that we tell ourselves. Just like some people say that they are not good at math, some people say I'm not good at English. Maybe because somebody made fun of them because of their accent or maybe because they cannot pronounce a word very well. The first step is of course believing in ourselves. I think that if you already can talk to machines using Java, using C++, using C, whatever you're using, learning English would be a piece of cake. But also we have to be careful if we're trying to be too perfect. 
I personally think that if you have an accent when speaking English, you should be proud of that. I am proud to have an accent because it's mine and it shows people that I'm not a native English speaker, but still I went outside of my comfort zone to learn a new language. Maybe when I finally start making videos 100% in Hangugo, I am sure I'm going to have a Wegugin accent and I'm completely fine with that. Before I go, I know I might sound a little bit dismissive of how hard it is for people to learn English depending on the country they are from. If you speak Italian or Spanish like me, it's going to be very, very easy for you to learn English because our languages are very close to English. We share the same grammar, we share the same shapes, in a way we share the same alphabet. But I know that if you come from Korea, it's going to be very hard to learn English because of how far away these languages are. Since I started studying Korean, I was able to really appreciate how far away English and Korean are from each other. It's crazy. This has really made me respect and admire the Koreans that are studying and speaking in English even more because I know now how hard it is to learn. If you had to ask me what is the number one skill that I believe changed my life for the better, I would say that learning English has been more beneficial for my life than actually learning to code. If you speak English, doors will open for you, not only career-wise, but life-wise. You will be able to travel more, you will be able to meet more people, you will be able to change your opinions after seeing different points of view. Your mind will expand in ways you cannot imagine. That's it for this video. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope that you like this kind of video. It's a little bit more personal, it's not about code. Let me know if you like this side of me, I guess, in the comments. I don't have an English course to announce, I've just wanted to share this opinion with you because it's a question that I get asked a lot. If you want to learn to code, as you know, you can do it for free. You can click the link below and I will see you there where we're going to learn to code from JavaScript to React, to React Native, to Go, many, many things. Thank you, as always, for watching. Stay happy, stay free, eat kimchi, kamsamnida, saranghayo. See you on the next one. Ciao.